It's me, Mikey Pipes, with Godzilla amongst a mini, a mini sea, a mini sea of condensers. And I've tasked Godzilla to check out all these units under preventative maintenance. I told him that we need to check the capacitors. We need to make sure the contactors are good. We need to make sure that the condenser fan motors have no oil dripping out of them. All right, because that's usually a sign that it's near its end of its life. I don't care what you guys say. It's the dripping oil is not normal. Unlike those, like those Navians. Dripping oily residue, not good. So, I tasked Godzilla, a.k.a. Steven, with doing that. And let's listen carefully, ladies and gentlemen. Because he's been staring at that for a while. Yeah. You hear that? You guys hear that? Thumbs up if you hear that. Do you hear that? Yeah, I hear. Then what's wrong with it? Is it? Oh, actually, no. Is there something wrong with that? Yeah. Because it's making noise. Because it should be making noise, mm -hmm. right? And if we were to take like a pair of needle nose and tap on it, there's something wrong with the coil and the relay pulling in, you know, making noise. So I asked you, and you finally said, after I basically, yeah, you know, basically yelled at you, because <laughs> you should notice, because you did air conditioning last summer. So you haven't been learning, you haven't been studying. You've been studying? Yeah, more like charges and stuff like that. Did you finish that book, Lost of Artists? Not the Lost of You've got Steam Heat. Did you finish that book? I didn't even find it. You didn't even... I, I gave you the book. No, I bought the book. I didn't give you the book? No, I bought the book. And you never finished it? No, I lost it. You lost it? I tried to take it on the trip. And it was... I it was gone. It. And I couldn't find it. But you had that book for... A good amount of time. Before the winter? No. Yeah, no. around the winter. Around the winter. Early winter time. Yeah, I'll give you that. And I said, listen, Godzilla, we do a lot of Steam Heat. And you need to know, buy this book. Yeah. It's written for the average lay person. Anyway, back to the moral of today's story. So Godzilla, I asked you how many poles is the contactor? Because you need to replace it. So I want you to replace that contactor and I'm not helping you. So how many poles is the contactor? You said one before, right? Okay, go get a one pole contactor and you'll see if it's the same. And you know, just for shits and giggles, so you know, because the longer we're here, it delays us going home. And even though it's a nice, beautiful day, overlooking the sea and the golf course over here in, in the five towns, right? In the Taj Mahal, basically. Because look at the size of this guy's effing generator. Look at this. You know, if you have a Taj Mahal, you need a generator like this. Huge generator. So Godzilla's gonna go to the truck and he's gonna get what he thinks is a single pole contactor. When it's a two pole contactor. You guys saw that, right? Let's go back there and see. <sighs> two poles. You see that? Let's take a look at the other ones because I had him check all of them out. Maybe that contactor was replaced before. Who knows? But yeah, see? Two pole, two pole, two pole. But the only way to really verify is let's look at the wiring diagram. Problem is, I don't know which one it is. That one came from there. Any other? Maybe it's this one. Let's look at the schematic. Not lose the screws. Let's see. There's our contactor. And, uh -huh. see that? Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's a single pole contactor, right? See L1 to L2? Let's take a look at the other ones. Now, for this client, we've recently taken over for another cost, another contractor, the HVAC systems here. Uh, a couple years ago, I put in an NFC 175 here and we did such a great job. Seven zones. I think I'll show it to you. But 
they put in two pole contactors here. When there was, used to be one. Hmm. Yeah, today's beat on Stephen Day. Well, since you went to HVAC school, you should be able to read the for schematic a for a yeah. week. Yes. You should be able to read it, right? Uh-huh. So, read that schematic. Ooh. Read that schematic mm -hmm. and tell me it is, if it's a two-pole contactor or a single-pole contactor. Two-pole. Say it again? Two-pole. Two-pole? Sure about that? Because I actually have a little bit of doubt. I'm not 100% confident because I'm not really that good with reading schematics. Just joking. But, but, there's a connection between L1 and T1, and there's not one there. Which, I may be wrong, but that's a very, very slim margin of chance that I, I'm wrong here. The schematic calls for a single pole contactor. The last contractor replaced all the contactors and put in double pole contactors. Now you need to fix it. It's back the way it was. I don't think we have any single pole. Well, what the fuck is this, Steven? Right. Time to fix it. <laughs> oh, Godzilla, 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 Godzilla. Mm-hmm. Let's see, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see. Let's see how he does this. Mikey Pipes is gonna climb up there. <sighs> I'm actually gonna lay down and video the step by step. All right, he's disconnected. Line voltage. Okay. Now I have a question. So oh. Am I? I told you I wasn't answering any questions. All right. You need to refer to the schematic. No, it's not about that. It's 24 volts here. Yeah, it's 24 volts there. So, so do I turn off the thermostat, or am I good to just grab it like that and pull it off? I don't know how well you would like to play operation. Are you good at playing operation? I'm decent. You're decent? Yeah, I'm all right. Well, let me tell you the repercussions if you fail the game of operations. Okay. Right? If you fail the game... It's not just the red light goes on and you get a little zap. Uh -huh. You'll have to go into the attic. Go we'll change a fuse. After, and it's the last one in this attic. All the way in the back of this Taj Mahal. And then you're going to have to, you have to go there with, you know, a quarter or a five sixteenths nut driver, right? And you have to go there with a fuse. And you have to take the cover off to go inside. You're basically going to waste a half hour of the day because you did not do if your I due diligence or... You failed the game of operation. Copy. Do not fail the game of operation. All right. A lot of pressure. There's no pressure. Alternatively, you kill the power. Uh -huh. And you can do that by going to the whatever zone this, therm this, this thing is and turn off the cooling at the thermostat. Yeah. Okay. You know where the master bedroom is? Yeah. You know where the thermostat is the master bedroom? Yeah. Then go turn it off. Right. I actually called him Mr. Hefner accidentally. Did you really? <laughs> I swear to God, I walked right in. He's right there. And I'm like, oh, hello, Mr. Hefner. I was like, fuck. That's his name. What did, he say? did he say anything? No, 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 no. But I said it low enough that like, I kind of got away with yeah, it. Yeah, we call him Hugh Hefner. Because it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The guy's still wearing his robe. Props to him. All right, back to our regularly scheduled program of Steven, a.k.a. Godzilla, diagnosing and replacing a two-pole contactor with a single-pole contactor. And if this was 
test, get all the questions wrong. Tell them like it is. It's cool. Check back with me in a week. <laughs> he's confident. Well, I can tell you what, he's confidently using the wrong tool for the job right now. Yeah. And he knows it. Let me ask you a question. Why are you using, was it a flat? Mm -hmm. Why are you using a flat instead of like the 516 to make your life easier? It's tight in there. It's tight in there? Yeah. You don't think the tool, how do you think they got on there? You think someone used a flat screwdriver like that to put those screws in? Probably not, but Probably, I didn't exactly. to cut these again. Why do you have to cut those again? Because it was tight in the way. Really? Not, yeah. You didn't even try. No, I did. I tried to move it. Yeah? Yeah, and then I barely even got this in there to, for me. I'll move that out. You're right, though. Would you, Mike? Oh, you're not on the thing. Oh no, I am. Don't worry. Would you <laughs> put this in first, or Me would personally? you wire first? Yeah. Depends on the on this particular case. Yeah. In this particular case, I would secure the contactor first. Spare the viewers and pause. <laughs> All right, Steven's got the Milwaukee M18 impact driver. He's got the single pole contactor. videotape their players so they can uh, review after the fact. This is going to be one of those. <laughs> cool. I've watched film before. on the bottom one but not the top one.
Come any looser than that. You might as well just cut it off and strip it, restrip it. Restrip it? When in doubt, cut it out. Should I grade you now? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's take a look at what he did. Single pole has black going to black and the black wire at the bottom. Let's look here. BK to there, BK there, very good. And the other one, CHC opt. What is CHC opt? CHC is crankcase heater optional that's going to the bottom of line one with the that jumper makes this a single pull on the other side l2 going to t2 i know it says t3 there but it's not terminal three red and orange at the top of that red and orange very good and everything else appears to be okay i would just keep this a little bit out of the way Maybe we should flip this around to avoid touching 24 volts, potentially touching that 110 volt there. Should keep that out of the way, like that. So he passed. Next. Did you look at the condenser or uh, fan motor? No, not on this one. Then why even, even go to that one? Well, let's finish up this one and make sure it turns on before you start uh, you know, jumping back and forth. 
one thing at a time because for some reason it don't work and we're already working on something else all right Steve is taking off the condenser fan motor and we're gonna check to see if there's any oil on the shaft and as you can see she's not bad but still not abnormal we'll end up swapping this out before the end of the summer you'll see all right Stephen let's continue you took a look at this you tell me the numbers are good where should they be so it's a two ton it's around 60 degrees so around eight ish We have that plus minus too, so we're all right to look and see it having the subject be in 10. Okay. What about our low side pressure? It's part of the job, Stephen. Yeah. Ready to say it was okay until I pointed out the evaporator coil. So what are you gonna do? You got the coil cleaner. Okay. I told Godzilla that on this side there's a hose faucet. It's finally getting warm. It's getting hot. It's getting real hot. Working them today. All right, finishing up the service call on this outdoor condenser. Actually, all of them, but we're just videoing this one. Stephen uh, washed down the condensing coil, and then he asked me, "Hey, Mike, maybe I should have uh, put the cover on before I washed it." And I said, "Yeah, it probably would not have been a, a bad idea to do that." And I said, "Well, before you plug it back in, let's put the cover on." And uh, we'll test pressure, let it run for, you know, 10, 15 minutes and see what the pressures are at. Now that the coil's kind of clean, cleaner. It's got the little stubby. Screw on over there. And we'll test pressures and temperatures and subcool. All right. Says, we're plugging all the other ones, Godzilla. Well, what the fuck are you doing then? <laughs> Come on, Godzilla, get cracking. You must like working late. These are what you don't worry, the late days are coming, Godzilla. So they're not Fridays. Oh, well, that's true. That's true. Because you know, usually one o'clock on a Friday, Mikey Pipes is in the pool. Especially, well, yeah, the summer. Especially the summer. All right, we're finishing up here. Thanks for tuning in. We threw Godzilla to the wolves, getting his hands dirty. 
I'm all right with it. Give me some comments, helpful criticism. Listen, I got tough skin. I really don't care. Give me all of it. I really don't care. All right? Give it to him. Yeah. That's Lord. right. St. Mike commands thee to open up a can of whoop ass on Godzilla in the comment section down below. Peace out. <laughs> Subscribe, like, notification bell. If you like content like that, then you need to support me and Godzilla by subscribing to this channel. St. Mike commands thee. Do it now. All right, a little post service call update. You know, the client asked me, he's like, what do you think about these systems, these reams? And uh, he goes, what would you do if this was your house? And I said, well, listen, you, I call him Hugh Hefner, right? <sighs> I was like, that's a loaded question. It's like me, comes to my house, you know, I got Bosch. And I got a Bryant two-stage system, strictly just because for cost-effective purposes. And I was like, but if you want to spend the money, how about we throw in a Bosch in the problematic area, which is the master bedroom suite, and uh, which is about, I'd say about, 850 square feet. He's got two walk-in closets. He's got a fairly large bathroom and he's got the master bedroom itself. And I was like, why don't I give you a Bosch IDS 2.0, two ton, and let's get it done. And he goes, you know what, Mike, do it. I was like, but we need to work on the platform. So I got my masonry guy going over there on Monday. Oh, the dog. Birds. Look at this. She sees birds. Anyway, I got my masonry guy going over there on Monday. He's going to extend the, the existing platform because they're, they're too close together. And I'm going to put the master bedroom condenser on the, the new extension of the platform, taking out the bush. And gradually over time, we'll have more and more room there. So little post-service call update you know through Godzilla to the wolves on this one again this was a routine preventative maintenance service call and I just want him to focus on one system which was the master bedroom we checked all of them came all once over but the master bedroom was has been a problem for this client for a number of years and we're just gonna replace it so stay tuned that'll be next week thanks for watching if you haven't done so already, subscribe. Appreciate it.